Baines Creek Winery in Manchester is in a modern building right on a busy interstate. But when you walk into the building, you've got a charming way of old fashioned methods for doing champagne with 100% Tennessee fruit. So I'm here with Josh Brown, who is the second generation winemaker here at Beans Creek. Josh, this is the most interesting process for making this sparkling wine. So walk us through it, because I know it's very time consuming and labor intensive. This is actually the second step of the process that we're seeing right now. First step actually takes place in the tanks upstairs through the initial fermentation. The process that we use for this champagne, but we can't call it that because it doesn't come from France, right. um, is a secondary fermentation in the bottle where the CO2, car carbon dioxide, is actually trapped in that bottle and that's what gives you your bubbles from your sparkling wine. And then we do a process of method champenois, bottle fermentation to make it a sparkling strawberry wine. Okay, so tell us how you get the bubble in the bottle. Well, in the, in the fermentation process, you have a sediment from the spent yeast cells and in the bottle fermentation that we do with this strawberry, we have actually sediment in the bottom of that bottle, and that is the spent yeast cells from that secondary fermentation. Okay, I can see them floating around in there and settling at the bottom of the bottle. Yes, now that doesn't hurt anything, but I, you wouldn't want to drink that, would you? No, not really. So we need to clean that up and make a nice, clean, clear champagne. So the bottles that are laying down, that is actually starting to work the sediment down to where we can get it out of the bottle by leaving the wine in the bottle. And what you're seeing here has been in the bottle for about two years already because the process of that bottle fermentation is so long. Then the next step is for uh, it to be placed into these quite interesting looking racks. Well, these are called riddling racks. So, um, and what you see here, and this is a bottle that, as you can see the sediment down towards the, what it would be the top of the bottle if it was up, upright, the sediment that is coming all the way down from the bottle and settling in that neck around right. that crown cap. Um, so in the Riddling racks, these bottles are hand turned two to three times a day to start working that sediment down into the neck of the bottle. Got it. So how long do they stay in this rack? About three weeks. Okay. So basically what's happening in the bottle is the yeast is eating the sugar and it is ca causing this sediment that you've got to get out before it's ready for it to be, be consumed. Correct. All of this long process is necessary for it to be nice and clear and bubbly at the end of the, of the day. Yes. Then obviously you've got to somehow get all of that off while the bottle is upside down. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? cold. So these are the bottles that have come out of the riddling rack and this is a freezer that we've got a brine solution in to freeze that sediment plug to be able to get it out and have clean clear sparkling wine. Okay so again it stays upside down through this whole process yes. and when you pull this out then you should have the frozen plug. Correct, correct? yes. So we've got that frozen plug. You can see that ice right in here. Yeah. So now we've got to get that out. And again, these bottles are under about 90 pounds of pressure from that fermentation in that bottle. So to get that out, all we do is come over here, we'll rinse a little bit of that off the neck, and then we just pop this cap off. Make sure we get oh, all wow. that sediment out of it. Oh yeah. We'll put a little temporary plug on this bottle. So from here, this is basically a dry sparkling wine. So we do sweeten this up a little bit to about the sweetness of what the berries come in from the farm. Got it. So I have to add a little bit of a simple sugar solution to that. Um, but first, before I add my sugar, I have to take a little bit of out of each bottle to make sure it doesn't overflow. Got it. To add our simple sugar solution, we have our high tech farmer's pipette, is what <laughs> my dad used to call it. Um, just a little syringe that we inject this simple sugar solution into. And you want to do it nice and slow so that it doesn't really interrupt the champagne or the sparkling wine. I keep calling it champagne. Um, so we let it sit there for just a minute. Now I do want to add a little bit more back to that to make sure that the bottle is full. And will that come from this? It'll come, yeah. So this, this bottle I use for overfill and then if I have out, poured more out of a bottle than I put sugar in, I'll just add some back to it. Got it. So we just want to get that 
and everything is kind of slow with the champagne process because you can see it kind of agitates it there yes, and you want to do it. Um, so what we've got to do now is we have to put the actual plug or champagne cork in it and then we put a wire hood. Okay, show me, show me how you do that. All right. So it's again, it's a lot of more hands on. Um, we do use just a synthetic cork, um, champagne cork. Um, it's a brute strength going in with it. So if we take that temporary cap off. Then we have to give it a little love tap to make sure that that <laughs> is down, it's seated in there well so it doesn't come out. Again, it's under pressure. Right. And I don't ever take my thumb off of this because the pressure could blow that cap back out. Got it. It has happened. So the wire goes on. And then to seat it, we get five turns which gives it about five and a half rotations. Five won't hold it, six will break that wire. So now we have a finished bottle of sparkling strawberry wine. And it's all been done by hand. All been done That's by hand. That's the best part. <clears throat> yes. Josh, here's our 100% ready to consume bottle. Tell us about the uniqueness of this product. Well, as far as I know, we're the only one in the state of Tennessee that are doing a sparkling strawberry wine. That's great. I think we need to taste it. Well, let's go with it. Is there a trick to opening? Well, there is a little bit because as you saw when I, when I did the bottle, I give a little love tap to that cork to make sure it's seated in there. Right. So sometimes it takes a little bit of effort to get it out. But uh, undo the full, you gotta take the wire hood off. And again, I wanna keep my thumb on it just because I don't want it blowing. And again, with safety, anytime you're doing a champagne or sparkling wine, you never want to point the cork at anyone. Right. So it's either up or away. And twist. Oh, you sweet. Got the pop. Beautiful. So as you see in the, in the glass there, those, those bubbles, they're very, very small, tiny bubbles. Mm -hmm. And they're going and they're going and they're going. That is a telltale sign that that sparkling wine is done this true method champenois bottle fermented in that in this with the secondary fermentation in that bottle so if you see larger bubbles that are kind of exploding like a carbonated beverage that's 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 the sign of an artificially carbonated sparkling wine that basically they add co2 as it's being bottled got it so we want these tiny bubbles in there yes absolutely well josh thank you for this wonderful tour and showing us how this is done and then I just have to say let's just toast to local. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.